Okay, everybody, this is my spoiler review of the new Apple TV show, Sunny. This is of episodes one and two. Make sure you've watched both episodes before you check out my review. We're going to be talking about everything from both episodes. Please no book spoilers in the comments. Now, it's cool this is an A24 production, so that usually means quality, which gave me a lot of faith in wanting to cover this show, and also because I love Rashida Jones as an actress. And it's cool that Apple TV gave her this lead role because she was so good in another Apple TV show with a minimal role in Silo. What I liked about this two-episode premiere is that the first scene that hooks you in with this bloody murder that happens with this robot, it is revealed by the end of episode two what actually went down there and who was involved. So it hooks you in from the top and it leaves you with a great reveal and cliffhanger at the end of episode two. Now the show opens with the distraught Rashida Jones playing Susie and she is with her mother-in-law, Noriko, and they're both being interrogated by somebody who is looking into the disappearance of loved ones in this plane crash. Now, right from the start, the mother-in-law character of Noriko is someone who is clearly suspicious. We've seen this character before and she already leads on. She knows exactly what the son was wearing that day, Masa, and even Susie questions this a bit, but she's also overly jolly. And yes, everyone reacts to death or let's say having family members missing differently, but it's almost still too jovial. Now, Susie hates robots, so it's a nice setup that by the end of these two episodes, she'll start coming around to a robot in Sunny, and she hates robots because her mother was killed by a self-driving car. What's also interesting is the woman that was interrogating them knew that her husband works at Ematech, so that is very strange because that is when Susie responds saying he works in refrigerators, but why would this woman know that? So how out of the loop was Susie? It's also important in episode one, we don't see him in episode two, but there's this mysterious white-haired man who the mother-in-law says is Yakuza, and he is somebody who takes advantage of people in pain and loss, gives them something, but is going to expect something in return, but they made a very clear point of this character, so that is a character we got to keep an eye on. I love the way they blend some dark humor in this show, though, like her saying he used to give out rice crackers, and now it's junk, like just regular chips. Now, when I'm talking about humor, I like too in this show. I love the moment when they go to the tear seeking ceremony and Susie says this is like torture porn, seeing all of these people who are grieving have to call their lost loved ones. But the big twist is that Susie calls Masa, her husband, and his phone is ringing. Now, through all this, having her son and f husband be missing, not sure if they are alive or not, you also have this story going out in the news about this counselor, Ito, who died, and it's reported that it's from a fatal fall. And then she'll learn from the bartender later on, Mixie, that it was actually reported that it was a fatal fall with a robot accidentally crushing and falling on the counselor, but we know this is not the truth. Now, Susie will come home to a man named Yuki who works with her husband. It's also interesting, just like the woman who was questioning them, this character of Yugi refers to the husband always in present tense, so it makes you think they know something also more than they're leading on. There's a lot of characters like that in this show. And it's also interesting, when she goes to the party later, she meets a younger man with the same name. So I think that's the real one that was on the card, and that this older version is not his real name we're seeing here. But he gives her the gift from Ematech. He says the top of the line homebot and its name is Sunny. We learned this was created by her husband Masa and he programmed it especially for Susie. And he convinces her to keep this robot because we know she hates robots because he keeps saying that Masa would take great comfort in knowing you have Sunny. I love though that she puts it to sleep immediately and just throws it in the closet. So you're getting that Chucky or recently Megan vibes type horror story and also very Black Mirror. Now, when she goes to this office party at Ematech, it's interesting because she actually sneaks in because a bot comes out of Division 5 and she goes into Division 5. That is the same area that she'll be in in Episode 2, but this time she's able to get in because they actually have the security sensor working where when she goes later, it's not. And that is something that the door just opens on her own. It still detects that somebody broke in, but she tries to even ponder, like, why did the door open for me? But here we see it's because of using her phone, and she goes in, and this first time, 
the glass is you can see through it it's not covered there's not fog on it so you're seeing there's like these different setups it reminds me of westworld of like almost like it's simulations of different areas like you see a bar you see outside of a building you see a dentist's office and then the last room which is the most important so far is this yellow room with the blood spatter and this time though she just sees little dogs in there so that also reminds me of another apple tv show severance where severance had like the bunnies this is with dogs you're wondering why is there dogs in there so it's building a lot of intrigue which i just love now this is the same blood spatter we saw from the top of the episode and we'll learn more about this blood splatter as these two episodes go on now Susie will then go to the bar where she had her first date with her husband and now she at the bar is thinking about the blood spatter she just saw and it cuts with thoughts of her husband so she's already getting these twisted feelings of thinking maybe he caused this now we meet the bartender Mixie who takes a liking to Susie and Susie warms up to her eventually it's also interesting that Susie is a sponge she takes on a lot from other people and absorbs it and kind of just blurts it out so she does this here when she explains to the bartender her husband is super intimidating you don't want to be an asshole that disappoints him this is what she got from the man at the party she would also say to the man at the party yuki that he should cry it eliminates stress that line that was said by the instructor so she repeats things and absorbs it and then says it back to other people and we'll see the same behaviors actually in sunny the robot because she'll start doing the pathological line that we'll see in episode two that she's learning from Susie. Mixie also mentions it takes 21 days to adjust to new things and she's talking about basically her adapting to not being with her family anymore but I think this was more for the audience to take in too that we're also seeing 21 days Susie adapting to living with a robot and seeing how that relationship grows and accepting Sunny in her life. Now Susie is a loner by nature. She explains she moved to Japan to live on her own. We'll learn in the next episode she had the same conversation very similar with Masa and was saying that she saw that people live like hermits there's a one percent in Japan that do that and she liked the idea of that but I think it's very interesting that Masa says to her he had done that as well for three years but that she's not understanding what lonely really means and it's true because it's a great just wisdom you learn in life that there's a difference between being lonely and alone and I think that's what he was getting at with Susie that you're craving aloneness but you don't want loneliness just different thing now Mixie also has sex with her home bot and she programs it to do that through the first mention of this code we hear that lets you hack into bots so as these episodes go on this is something that Susie will look into now Mixie also brings up like I had said that this robot she thinks wasn't an accident that killed the counselor and this is where Susie says back, if robots were killing people, we would definitely know about it. And Mixie's like, would we though? And then she also says, I would always turn them completely off, not just to sleep because they freak her out, these bots. And that's going to be important too, because you could see Sunny just keeps waking up her own when she puts her to sleep. But it's also important that she says, if robots are killing people, we definitely know about it. Because if you actually see when she looks up this news report in her bedroom and is watching it on the screen, all the headlines, one of the headlines is saying that there's a huge rise in home accidents. So I'm sure this is actually robots causing this and not just accidents. Now we see this man with the ponytail for the first time is spying on her with his own home bot. And we see she will see that in the next episode across the way watching her. It's also a very strange moment when she comes home to Sunny and Sunny's just like shut off looking at the wall. This is like the most horror moment to me. And then on the floor is just blood tracks from Sunny. So this is what's going to cause her to throw her onto the bridge and wants to throw in the river, but she's too heavy. So she just leaves her there. I did think it was weird though. She didn't ask Sunny about that. That felt a little bit like a plot hole there. Now, when she does look up this killing of the counselor, she can zoom in on the photo of his house and see that trail of blood. So you can see that it's staged by a home bot and it looks just like the trail from Sunny. So this is also giving you clues to that Sunny might have a past that she's not revealing or that she even knows about. And she's freaked out because she wakes up the next day to a Merry Christmas with cookies from Sunny. So she got back from the bridge. And when she's about to hit her with a bat, because you're kind of waiting for that moment. Like, you know, why don't you just destroy this thing? She gives her the goodbye kiss and wave that Masa does. It's almost like they already thought this would happen. Masa and his team and that that's like the fail safe. And it's 
also, at the same time, the first break in the walls that Susie puts up between her and this robot. It's the first time she gets through to her. So the first episode, I'm giving an 8.8. Really strong, really intriguing. Got me real excited. And Rashida Jones is, again, awesome. Now, start of episode two, we see the Ematech office. These workers have these AR goggles on, and they're doing this exercise. And this one worker gets a call that causes him to panic, which we'll see later on, is Susie getting into Division 5, and there's a security breach. So this is cool because you see later in the episode what's going on. You don't know what exactly is going on, but then it leads up nicely to that point. I also think it's interesting when we go to the flashback when she first met Masa at the restaurant. The first thing he ever said to her was, don't blame the machine. That's telling all about his character and what his beliefs are on machines. We also see the first time this hint at this mysterious character of D in her past. She's texting D that night saying I'm sorry over and over and not getting a reply. By the end of this episode, she will call D and her child, she'll hear that voicemail of the child of D with no answer. So I'd love to hear you guys' theories on D. And again, no book spoilers. But I love how they decided to edit this where we're seeing the current thoughts she is having blended with her past memories. Like seeing in her past, Masa saying to her, I'm Masa, I make homicidal robots care to join. Now, Susie will ask Sunny what was Masa working on? Why blood did Masa hurt someone? Now, I like she asked about that. I still wish though she asked Sunny why there was blood from her in the house. But Sunny will say her first memory is meeting Susie. And she says, if Masa was a bad man, then I would be bad too because he made me. So that freaked me out hearing that. And it clearly freaked out Susie that she brings her to this underground tech. Now he informs her that the homebot Sunny updates constantly. It's an advanced model. Big reveal at the end of the episode is that Sunny is actually definitely an advanced model. And this isn't her first go around as a homebot. She was actually being used by Masa. And that her files are locked from the past. That explains why. Because they don't want anyone seeing what she was going through with that killing of the counselor. It's also interesting she's hypnotized by video feedback loops. So that will get its payoff later on. Which was nice that she figured out how to kind of give her a drunk feeling. That will be important at some point. There's going to be some crazy scene probably where she's going to have to have that in her back pocket, Susie, to just distract Sunny. Now when she brings up this guidebook... The techie freaks out, but this will lead his granddaughter to give the truth of the situation. She explains the guide is the dark manual, and the creator has a signature wolf in red. So we'll see by the end of this episode that that signature wolf in red is clearly of Masa's, and that he'll use it on the computer at the murder scene. But she is so wants to know what are those drawings in his notebook why didn't she look in those it's driving her nuts in this episode so she's looking everywhere she keeps thinking about it in her memories but she also recognized the drawing it was in a drawing that was hanging in her mother-in-law's place that she mysteriously threw out it's also interesting when they go to see noriko the mother-in-law that sunny outright says noriko knew masa the best and susie's like that's not true but it clearly is. She says she didn't know he worked in robotics, which is definitely a lie. Now, I love the moment, though, where you see just visually her warming up to Sunny because Susie has her on the back of the bike. I thought that was great. Now, in the flashback of their first date, Masa explains that he made a friend through work who helped him very much, kind of getting out of that lonely spell. And I'm thinking this might be that man who was running to cover for the security of Division 5, and the man, same man, is in that final scene telling Masa everything's gonna be okay and work out. And he learned how to not feel scared when people looked at him. And you see he just totally lied to her when he said to her originally about the notebook that the drawings are doodles and that he works in refrigerators. It's also interesting, there's a moment that Susie gives Sunny a lot of info on Masa's personality. I think this is what started to trigger to lead to Sunny to have a dream and really a memory of before her time with Susie. It's also interesting that Sunny, when they go to the building with Susie, that Sunny shuts down, says Division 5 denied. So that was also a fail safe. They did not want her near that and don't want Susie near that. So Susie will again enter Division 5 and the door just opens this time, like I'd mentioned. But now the yellow room still has the blood, 
but all of the rooms have this stained glass now. And there's an exciting scene where she's being chased by this man who I think is very important in this story. And she ends up being in the room with the big workers and it's cool that they had it that Sunny was the one distracting them by having them do the exercise again. Now Sunny is very upset when they get back from this whole adventure and Susie gives her a drink and plays a trippy video. That was great. But we'll see Sunny comes in with Masa's shoes. Now, the reason they can be yellow is because of that questionnaire because she did eventually figure out they were yellow shoes. And I wonder she didn't tell the questionnaire person that because she figured it out during the crying session. Did the mother-in-law tell the questionnaire or whoever is in control of all this? See, we see reveal that the bot brought the shoes, was the one spying on her, and he says, she believed I was from the airline, talking about Sunny, but I couldn't read its code. And I think this man with the shades is the man with the ponytails when spying, but I couldn't totally tell. So Sunny and Susie will lie down together, and there's this breathing sound effect, and she likes it, and they even cuddle. So really, turn around for Susie here and her beliefs in robots. And we see that Masa is the man that we heard in the first episode, the top of the episode, that's being told it'll be fine, Masa, no one will know. And that is the man from the exercise and the one who's protecting Division 5. And we see the Red Wolf signature that Masa puts on the computer. And he says it must stay in darkness. And that's shot from a bot's eyes. So that's definitely Sunny because Sunny's the one having this dream. She's remembering this happening. What a great hook to end episode two. I'm going to give this one an 8.6. I do think episode one was a little stronger, but still really good episode. Episode two and together, I thought this was a really exciting two episode premiere. I haven't been this excited about a sci-fi show since Severance that got me this hooked. So really, really interesting. It does just enough humor too to alleviate some of it and realizing how crazy of a story this is. But it has that Black Mirror feel. It has... A really exciting concept. It also reminds me of the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix. And I just love seeing Rashida Jones in a leading role. So I love to hear your theories. I, no book spoilers, please. But definitely there's something I believe going on here that Susie is being tested by Masa clearly. And she's supposed to experience all this grief and maybe to see how Sonny would help somebody in that situation. And he's using Susie as kind of a lab rat but we'll see if that kind of plays out that way i'd love to hear all the theories again and please comment your thoughts on the show as well please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my reviews of sunny and house of dragon i'm doing as well i also do celebrity interviews and i'll see you next time